So there are a lot of ways that I organize my life that are very different than other people and that make me very, very different than other people I've realized. And this didn't become evident until I had been doing this for years and the product of it had realized itself. And um, some of them are, are, are things that are so different that when I explain them to people, I get reactions like, that's not even human or something like that. I don't think that it's not human. Um, if anything, some of the most human things seem pretty inhuman when looked at in the right context or whatever. But um, I, the, fir the first thing is that um, <clears throat> I am always thinking about how people are benefiting me. Now that, now before you immediately say like, that sounds like something a insert evil person would do. I mean, you do it too. It's just that I, the, the difference is the, the degrees in explicitness. Like everyone ever thinks about, well, they don't think consciously about it, but they're, they're looking at other people for how they benefit them. Um, it's psychological egoism. That's just this fucking <laughs> most reliable theory of human motivation that exists. Um, but the difference is that I think about it consciously. I, I, I will explicitly go through my friends list every so often and think, how does this person benefit me in some way? And I don't really ask the question how I'm benefiting them because you've worked that out already. Like if I'm your friend, then you've already answered that question for me. Like I, I, I realize that I, I probably also won't be your friend if I'm not benefiting you in some way. And that's fine. But I don't need to figure out why that is because I'm clearly your friend. So you've already worked that out. It's not something I need to waste mental energy on. Now, that now the people I talk to, yes, I need to figure that out. So I go through my friends list every so often and I uh, look through um, the names and I think like, why, well, why do I still want to be friends with this person? There are common factors usually. Like the, the easiest way to still be my friend is to like and share my posts. <laughs> it's really that simple. <laughs> if you're that fucking worried about losing my friendship, just like and share my shit. Like I have, I have tolerated so much from people who just, uh, why are you friends with this person? Because you reliably like and share my shit. I mean, that's, I will put up with a lot. Um, <laughs> But other than that, I look for things like what information are you sharing? Like how good is, how high quality is the information you're sharing? And I'm going to link a video, a uh, talk or whatever about um, information quality and not, knowledge density that I have made to evaluate information. But ba the gist is that just impactful information is valuable and getting to it is hard and people don't like impactful information because it's threatening to them or it's difficult or whatever. So they don't, they don't typically share it as much. And having people who share good information is extremely valuable. Um, in some context, people will pay for it. So yeah, you want, you want that. Um, the other, other things I will keep friends for are if you're really funny, um, if you're fun to hang out with, um, if you're hot and I could plausibly sleep with you, um, like one of the most common situations I've found myself in is like browsing their friends list. Oh, this person got married and they're not in an open marriage. This is a normal fucking like forever and ever happily ever after marriage. Will I ever interact with this person again? Nope. D friend. Cause the thing is like, why would I, I mean, unless I really hang out with you a lot, that's pretty much a death knell. Like you're not, you're not funny. You don't give me good information. Um, like you're not fun to hang out with. So what else is there? You know? And there's this misconception that I want to be around smart people all the time. You can be incredibly stupid and still fun to hang out with. In fact, there are tons of people who are very smart who I would not want to hang out with at all. And I will just know on Facebook because I don't need 
because if the if the main product of what you're giving me is your mental output, then I don't need to know you in person. I can just go on Facebook and or wherever and get your output there. I don't need to, I don't need to interact with you in person. And sometimes it's it's a lot better that way. Um, but other things are. Um, um, realizing like most people know this most people are okay with this but but people don't apply this to their lives with the forcefulness that i do because it, it, if i feel like i'm having to start to use this analogy to start a new video game level or to start a new video game save or whatever and like start from level one or this person's i have to like power level this person from like, like level 10 to because that's what it feels like. It feels like you're starting on someone else's save file and you have to power level them to a point where they're viable or something. Sometimes that's useful. Sometimes I will do that. So if a person has a lot of potential and I feel like they're valuable friends in the long term, I will invest a lot of time in getting them up to a certain point because I know that there's a lot of potential return there and they're a good investment. But the thing is, there are lots of times where I'm just... The, if I hit a certain wall after a certain number of times and I have to fight to do things like just get you to get in the habit of Googling things or get in the habit of citing sources or whatever, if I have to, if I have to fight for this constantly, I'm, I could just, you're not worth it. There are other people who I don't have to fight for this for. And I would rather talk to those people. So I don't like, why would I prefer you or this other person? And that's what, I, what, that's what I think a lot of people don't understand is that they, they, they are smart and they think that I, I can, like, yeah, I can, I can say intelligent things. So, like, why wouldn't you want to know me? Well, because there are other people who can say intelligent things who don't have the deficits you do. And I think a lot of people find that hard to come to terms with, that for everything you could do, there's someone who could do the thing that you do and not be annoying about it or whatever. Um, and you have to work with that as an operating assumption. You have to assume that there could be a version of you that doesn't have the fucking annoying excuses that you do or whatever, that there could be a version of you without this little thing out there. And people would rather hang out with that version or know that version. So uh, every so often, every, um, um, season or two, I will, call about 50 or 100 people for my friends list. I keep I try to keep it around 300 because that's a that's a good number that I can easily pay attention to. Um if I if I never deleted friends like this, I would probably have about 4000 friends or 5000 or something like that. Um I get a lot of friend requests, I delete a lot of people and I'm constantly just curating everyone I know. The other things that um, I do that are kind of strange to most people are that I don't, I think about the scalability of interactions. So this is the second thing that I, I think is pretty foreign to a lot of people, but I, I think about um, how my interactions are disappearing into the ether, into the void, into oblivion. Because um, I think that because a lot of people believe in an afterlife. They they are attached to this idea that someone is watching them all the time and that all their actions are going to be kind of like reviewed in this film reel when they die. And they haven't really considered the possibility that all of this is just going to fucking be this voided nothing, this abyss, like after they die. So um, even if, like, I, if you believe in some sort of heaven, I, I sort of think that's asinine, but... Regardless, if you are rational about this, you should consider at the very least the possibility that um, that this film real scenario will not happen and that all of this will just be forgotten. So um, you should account for that possibility. And you and so ever since I was about 15 or 16, I've not really liked extremely private interactions because those are first of all human memory is not reliable at all so 
if an interaction occurs between just me and one other person, then it's sort of like the tree falls in a forest thing. Did it really happen? I can't prove that it did. And the thing is, my memory is fleeting with those sorts of things. It's, I, and yours is too. I'm not saying I'm exceptional here. Um, it's very difficult for that interaction to just have existed for any longer than this ex extremely temporary period of time. And so it's difficult for these things to have benefit. Like if I, because what, like how am I benefiting from this extremely temporary interaction? Whereas if I, if I'm interacting with someone over say messenger, I can save that. I can store that forever. I can reuse it. I can look it over again. I can search it. I can search information through Messenger, and that's one of the reasons I use Messenger and not Snapchat. I will never use Snapchat. Snapchat, and people ask me all the time, Alfred, why don't you use Snapchat? It's for nudes. Well, yes, I, I know. And I force the people who send me nudes to send me nudes by Messenger or text or whatever else. I'm not going to get your nudes through Snapchat. You can use some other platform. Bitch, you'll download a kick if you fucking have to. I'm not going to use Snapchat. <laughs> um, Snapchat does not save my logs, and I can't search it. I can do the, both of those things with Messenger. And you might say that you need, you like that because of privacy or whatever. Well, I mean, okay, but just use those, app, just use the disposable chats for the private shit. And, and the thing is, most of the time when people are talking over things that are auto wiped or whatever, it's, um, there's usually, Unless it's to, unless it's because they're doing something illegal, um, it's usually because they have secrets they'd rather not share with people, um, like they're cheating on somebody or whatever. But even if that weren't true, it's useful to have all the information to be stored. And I like being able to search Messenger. I like being able to, able to have all of my files in that sort of archived form and all the photos that I've used. It's extremely useful. And, I, and so I, I, every interaction I have is of a higher value if it's on a sort of permanent platform than if it's not on a permanent platform. So even though I'm very extroverted, I've always valued interactions over permanent media more because they, they scale. I can copy paste things that I say over Messenger and send them to hundreds of people. I can't copy paste what I'm saying out loud unless I'm recording it like I am now. So, like, it's not, I mean, I'm on the computer all the time even though I maxed out extroversion scores because I don't like talking to people when I know that everything is just fizzling away like fucking bubbles in a soda. I don't I don't like that at all. Um, and that's, that's, that's something I've always, I've always sort of taken into account is how I can get val get the most value out of the interactions that I have. I think that most people don't think this way. Um, and they don't, they're not thinking about how their interactions can scale and, and, and how, how, what the quality of information they're getting and how they're improving themselves all the time. I really don't think that most people um, take these things into account. But the thing is, I've noticed that a lot of successful people do. Like, Myelianopoulos has a spreadsheet where he looks at his friends for things. I think it was, like, intelligence, income, and attractiveness or something like that. Those were the three variables that he took into account. It was like a little Excel spreadsheet. And even if you, like my, mine are different. I use, I think, four or five variables. But it's similar, right? And, and if you look at your own friends, you'll find that there are similar reasons why you keep the friends that you have. I mean, because even, even if it's kind of complicated for each friend, it boils down to a set of common factors and yours might be six or seven factors but the thing is they're, they're, they're still going to be ultimately things that because because you because you make those decisions every day when you choose when you choose to talk to a person over another person you're not some 
you're not some judgment-free fairy, right? You're, you're making those decisions for other people too. There is a reason why you're talking to some person over another person. And, and you can't get out of this by saying, well, because I like them. Yes, you like them for reasons. You might not know what those reasons are, but once you really sit on that and dive into your psyche and figure out why you, you like those, you know, what the origin of that like is, then that's when you're going to find the reasons that make you want to know people. Um, <clears throat> and... There are other things I do that are really weird. Like I, I, I only shop for groceries at night, like really late at night. I avoid uh, driving as much as I possibly can. Um, I order products obsessively from Amazon, and um, I'm always thinking about how other people are using my time involuntarily, but. Those two things alone are different enough, I've realized, to warrant a now 16-minute video about this. So these are some of my habits, and I think that it would benefit other people to think about this, because I've realized that it's extremely unusual for people to think this way, and I'm not so sure why, because it seems to be beneficial to do so. So hopefully you gain something out of this. And if you also think this way, then I would like to hear from you.